Well, we're glad you're watching today on this April 19th, the third Sunday of April. We're going to begin our uh, service, as we call it, our stream service with announcements and prayer requests by Dave Ladd, our Minister of Administration. David? Good morning. We just have a few things. When it comes to announcements, the biggest thing we want you to be aware of is as we get ready to open our building to worship, corporate worship, we are doing everything we can to prepare. We, uh, we have sanitizers that have been installed. We have new mats that we put out. During communion, we are going to have self-contained con communion that will keep everyone from being from having any problems or difficulties. And our plans are, before we have our first corporate service again, we're going to sanitize our entire building. So our goal is to make things as safe as possible. So we wanted you to be aware of that. We also have still had people saying, I really would like to share an offering. And uh, we are not promoting or pushing that, but for those of you that would like to, we're going to ask that you send that to our church office at 156 East Spring Valley Pike in Centerville, Ohio. Now, if you didn't get that, uh, that uh, address, just back this tape up and write it down again so that you'll have that. That's 156 East Spring Valley, uh, Centerville, Ohio. Uh, we're not going to go into any more announcements at this point until we have a date that we can open the building and be prepared for that. Uh, on the prayer list, we just have some of the ones we had last week. Continue to pray for Jim and Pat Smith as Jim faces cancer. Uh, Rita Elder's brother-in-law, Lonnie Sporing, uh, he should be uh, back uh, uh, having his radiation treatment soon. All those at Quaker Heights uh, worshiping together. David Hurley, Wil Wilma's son, Larry Tucker. Uh, we do want to keep Donnie and Marie Moore in our prayers this Monday. Uh, Marie will be meeting with the oncologist to see where they go from this point. Also, uh, we both, uh, Randy and I both talked with Steve and Judy Miller, two of our dear members that are moving south, and Judy's mom is one of the cases, 98 years old, and she has uh, been, uh, it's been stated that she does have COVID-19, and it's putting stress on the family. We ask for prayer for that whole family as Steve and Judy uh, get situated down south and uh, prayers for her mother. In well, Lebanon, Indiana. Lebanon, Indiana, yeah. thank you. Um, and Trey Smith, uh, we have been praying for his family, especially his dad who passed away this past week, and we pray for comfort and peace to be upon his family. Dick and Pat Smith. Mention those you at did. the beginning. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, what I'm going to urge you to do this week is, uh, you know, when you're at your home and you're just your family or just yourself, Please take time daily to pray for one of these families or a family that you are aware of. Take time to pray for them. Find a devotional book. We have those here at the building. If you would like a devotional book, take time daily to spend with the Lord. He will bless your life if you'll do that. Also, when it comes to communion, we are encouraging people to have communion at home. Um, if you need communion cups, please give me a call. I'll set up a time to get those cups to you. So we're trying our best to be of assistance. If you know of prayer concerns, please contact Randy or myself, and we will lift that in prayer immediately. We ask for God's blessings upon you. May you be blessed by this service. Go ahead and pray for you. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for, in this limited way, that we can worship even though we're not together physically, that we spiritually can be united under your throne. We pray now your blessings on the special music, on the message, that it might touch lives, that it might remind us that you are still in charge and you are a loving Heavenly Father. It's in your name we pray, through the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. George Kidd is going to sing for us in the garden. I come to the garden alone.
Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? Listen to what Jesus says. I tell you, no, they weren't worse sinners. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Well, what an answer. These people didn't die because of that, uh, they were guilty of some sin. They died because a tragedy happened, but unless you and I repent, we too will perish. Verse four, of those, or those 18 who died when a tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? Same answer, I tell you, no, Jesus said, but unless you repent, you too, will all perish. I've thought about that verse many, many times. Unless you repent, you will perish. Let me talk about the word perish. Perish means to cease to exist. It's a strong word in the Bible. It means that you, you go to darkness, utter darkness. And repentance means to turn, to turn away from something and to turn to something. So when we say to repent, we're telling people to repent from sin and we all are sinners, by the way, if you didn't know that, and we turn to Christ. And out of that comes a blessing. The book of Acts even mentions the fact, uh, I'm not gonna reference the scripture directly, but it says that repentance is a gift. God gives you the gift of repentance. But I do wanna bring up a, a verse of scripture from the book of Acts, Acts 3, uh, 19. It says, repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repent means to turn to God, to turn away from sin, to turn to God, but our sins will be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is what's interesting to me. The word refreshing in the original language means recovery of breath. You can breathe again when you repent. There's something that's uh, freedom giving, releasing. When we repent of our sin to the Lord, we can breathe again, we can relax again, so to speak. And isn't it interesting in our day of the virus and worrying about breath and worrying about breathing around people, when we repent, there's a recovery of breath. Now here's what I'm gonna share with you today. I'm thinking that if Jesus Christ would speak to us today about what's going on with thousands upon thousands of people who've died in the last five, six weeks. And we, we have no idea where those numbers are going to end worldwide as well. Jesus might turn to us if we were to say, why did this happen? What, why are people being punished in this way? Are they worse sinners than others? No, Jesus would say they're not, but, unless you repent, you too will perish. That's the message I believe the Lord gives to us. It's about repentance, about turning to the Lord and, and, and away from sin. I wanna share this interesting comment with you. To one biblical commentator put it this way, to perish is to be banished from God forever and to be shut up with devils and, and the condemned spirits. It's to be excluded from heaven. It's to be driven from the river of life and which are God, God's right hand, to be doomed to the lake of fire. It's no small change to, to perish. And that's what it means to perish. But to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to obey and to repent brings life and it brings peace and it brings the ability to, to give to come back to, to, to live again. A preacher once said years ago, you cannot repent too soon because you don't know how soon it may be too late. Listen to that again. You cannot repent too soon because you do not know how soon it may be too late. So I appeal to all of you. I appeal to you to do what Jesus told people to do in the midst of mass tragedy in biblical times, repent or perish. Repentance is a gift. Let me close with this illustration of that. If you've ever had a son or daughter, if you've ever had a spouse, if you've ever had a parent, if you've ever had a friend come to you and say, I'm really under conviction what I've said to you, what I've done, and I want to 
ask your forgiveness and I, and I want to confess this sin to you. Did you feel distant from that person? No, you probably felt closer to that man or woman or young person than you ever have in your life. Repentance brings about closeness. Repentance brings about a bond together that we didn't have before. And that's why Acts 5.31 says that repentance is a gift from God. He gives you the gift to repent. Do you feel convicted about something? Enough to repent about it? It's a gift. It's a gift from the Lord. And Jesus told the people when they were asking him about two mass tragedies of the day. People being murdered in worship. Terrible thing. And people, 18 people losing their lives when a tower fell over. Granted, it's not like the, the Trade Center Tower kind of disaster, but it was a disaster nonetheless. And Jesus was asked, did these people commit bad sins and that's why they died? And Jesus said, I tell you, no. But unless you and I repent, we too will perish. Unless we repent, we too will perish. Don't ever forget that. Let's pray together. Lord, on this Sunday, we come together in worship through YouTube and Facebook. We're glad for these two venues to share a, a message of hope and a message of, of peace that comes from you to know that you are with us no matter what happens and that you do give the gift of repentance. Repentance is not a punishment, it's a gift. We feel closer to people who have repented to us we feel close to people that we have repented to. And most of all, we, when we repent, we feel a bond with you that we've never felt before. And you feel that same bond with us. Bless every home that's represented, that's watching tonight, today. Bless their lives. Bless their families. I pray a hedge of protection around them. In Jesus' name.